actually ready this time. Welcome, you guys. Shit. Open Mac Chronicles 1865 Rod here coming back at you guys. We got Schaefer, as always, in the house. What's happening, everybody? Schaefer's in the house. Hope What's everybody's Schaefer? having a great day. I'm loving life, man. Memorial Day weekend, right? Yeah, it is. Damn. Who knows when it's going to come out, but it, that's when we're filming it. Shit. It. <laughs> so, man, I'm pretty excited, man. We got a, we got another special guest today, man. I've been I've been hunting this guy down for a while too, man. This he's he's a, he's he's been around for a long time, man. Old yeah, school, yeah. old school. Uh, Carl Gonsolin, right? Yep, Gonsolin. Did I get it right? You yep. Got it right. Okay. Got, got <laughs> it right. First oh, shot. yeah, that's good. It's first that's shot. Me. I always Damn. Listen up. Good job. So, Carl, man, thank you for coming on right off the bat. I oh, appreciate you coming on. Yeah, and I just remember, like, the last time I saw you, man, I tell you this story all the time, but I think it was like, it was at least twelve or thirteen years ago. Oh. The garage story, remember? Oh <laughs> so, yeah, I remember so, that. That was fun. That's when I first met Carl. So I was a white belt. I think I had maybe like two stripes. I had oh, just yeah? started, maybe two or three stripes, right? And uh, my buddy Rich lives right down the road. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, his school shut down. I don't remember what school it was. Remember, it was the one. Uh, Are you talking my uh, first instructor school, uh, Placer County Grapplers? Placer County. Okay, yeah. When that one shut down, like nobody had school for a minute, right? Mm-hmm. So they were all like, "Let's go to Rich's house and train this garage and <laughs> nice. get freaking mats there." I actually looked at uh, Placer County Grapplers up mm-hmm. before. Before I moved out to uh, from from New Jersey, to really, Rockland. yeah, I freaking looked that shit up because I was like, dude, I was doing research for a long time, and well, that must and have been before you so came it was out. Before I, I was came a white belt, and when you oh, came yeah, out, yeah. I was a blue belt. Yeah, it was definitely before I came oh, out. Wow. But I think they must have closed probably like must have been like nine or ten years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, because I, yeah. dude, I was looking for places to freaking train. Mm-hmm. It wasn't too long after I got my purple belt was when they... I remember that because I remember Rich was like, we got this guy, Carl. He's really good. He's a pro belt. You guys are going to hate it when he comes home. Yo, like, he's building you up. I money. I know. I'm going to be broke. Yo, he's building you up. It's funny, man. My, my bank doesn't ride that <laughs> funny, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he'd bring in these little guys from, like, like Plastic Guy. They'd be, like, trying to leg locker guys. And we, I'd, I was just excited. I'm like, I get to roll with these other guys. Because I was still training at Infinite. Right. But I was like, on my off days, I would train with Rich because Rich was a blue belt. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was like... It's so cool. I got this blue belt that's actually <laughs> acknowledging my existence. He's going to help me. Yes, Rich. What do I do, Rich? He slowly so turns hard. into Elio yeah. Gracie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got a picture of Rich. I got a picture of Rich up here. Just yeah. morphs into yeah. it and yeah. shit. <laughs> but that's like, yeah, like fucking Hassan, dude, when he started, like, he was a purple belt. And I was, I remember starting looking. I'm like, this is a purple belt? He's the best fucking person I've ever seen in my life. I don't think anybody can beat him. I think he would choke Mike Tyson out. I still think he'd probably but choke you Mike Tyson remember, dude, when I first started, we had no purple belts. We None. had Phil. That one guy, Phil, uh, that little Asian dude, Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he, he might have been before you. He would, he was, he joined the Peace Corps. He would come in like once every three months, and he'd like oh, maul everybody, and then he'd leave. So Carl <laughs> coming in as a purple belt, I was like, oh my God, it was like a big deal. There weren't as many purple belts back then, dude. dude. Not it was at different, all. not like today. Shit, yeah. all right, hold on. We're, we are fucking going way <laughs> crazy. Thing is going too long. We, wait, no, like, not even that. We didn't even introduce yourself. I know. I did. I said his, I got his name right. I introduced yeah, you. Got his name go. right. You killed that. That was awesome. All right. But so tell, you, tell us about you. Tell us about yourself, Carl. Like, who are you? Uh, Where did you used to train? I know none of this. I know okay. none of your lineage or anything. Give us a little story. Really curious. Okay. So my name is Carl Gonsolin. I'm a black belt, first degree. About to get my second um, under Half Gracie um, and uh, Teddy Vita uh, right now. So. Uh, when I first started off, I trained, uh, what was I, 22 years old. So for reference, I'm 38 right now. So uh, so I started when I was 22. Um, the reason behind it was actually my, my middle brother, Sean. Uh, he's also a black belt now. Uh, at the time, he wasn't. He wasn't training. But uh, we had to get together over at his apartment where he was rooming with my uh, oldest brother uh, named Eric. And uh, you know how it is when you get some young kids together, yeah. someone wants to wrestle and stuff like that. 100%. So uh, right. I wrestled against a, a kid who was about mm. almost the exact same dimensions. We both didn't know anything about anything. Uh, nice. I didn't get submitted. He didn't get submitted. But overall, he was basically on top half. I think that was the position he ended up in. Did you wrestle he, at all or anything in, in high I school? I did nothing. nothing. Like, literally nothing. I played okay. chess and, like, <laughs> Oh, shit. Yu-Gi-Oh you were like magic. me, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to play Dungeons oh, & Dragons okay. and shit. Yeah. I was a fucking super nerd. But, hey, <laughs> it's all good. It worked out pretty well, but, like, I have no reference point over okay. at all. So, um, and the, the specs of us, we were, like, matched up almost identical. So, after everyone kind of left, my uh, brother, Sean, he went into the room. He's back with the little inkjet printers and stuff. And I see him okay. come back yeah. after 10 minutes. <laughs> has, like, some papers printed out. And it has a bunch of different jujitsu places on it. So uh, he hands it to me. He's all, don't come back here until you check out these places and sign up at one of them. Wow. He's all, don't embarrass me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Man. You know, I don't really take anything to heart because, you know, right. brothers, I'm not going to yeah. oh, how dare you? Like, I don't care. But um, so I was like, ugh. 
I do want to hang out with you still because <laughs> at the time I think it was uh, it was an N64. It might have been GameCube that they had okay. over there. Uh, they had a projector TV over there. You know the big heavy ones that you can't Hell steal yeah. oh, unless yeah. you have a lot of meth in you. But <laughs> <laughs> generally you can't steal yeah. that without blowing out your back. Yeah. But uh, so they had that, and I believe they had the GameCube with Smash Brothers at the time over okay. there. So I was really looking forward to going over there playing and stuff. So I was like, ah, whatever. I'll bite the bullet. I'll do it. So within a week. Uh, the first place I went to on the list, it uh, it was listed as like a jiu-jitsu uh, place, but it was like a old traditional martial arts one. Gotcha. So I went to that one. This was actually off of, uh, you know where uh, um, Precision is? Mm -hmm. oh, similar, yeah, yeah. Yeah. similar area, yeah. but if you go up the street to where it turns into like, I think, Roseville Parkway or something, uh, down Antelope, uh, there was a, a traditional martial arts place over there. I don't remember what its martial art was, but anyway, I went through the door. Uh, before like 10 minutes before the class was going uh, slate to start on uh, from the printout so I you know said hi to the guy oh I was wondering do you uh, teach uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu here and he's oh, all shit. yeah and I, and I was like oh cool awesome I was like oh what rank are you he's all a black belt I was like oh nice under who and he's all the Gracies and I was like uh, which Gracie? <laughs> and he's like, oh, the Gracies. I'm getting so the little, like, red, little red flags coming up right there. Yeah, well, red flag. All of them. From my standpoint, I didn't do any training, but I've seen the Gracies uh, in, like, the, I, I saw UFC's UFC 1, shit. 2, yeah, yeah. 3, and 4 uh, with yeah. my brother uh, Sean before we watched it when we used to get from Blockbuster and Hell hope yeah. that they don't call the parents type thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and Dang, <laughs> good old VHS. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but, like, I remember that, and I also remember that there being some issue between the Gracies. So I figured... Yeah. They, they can't, like, if you have an issue between it, they're probably not all going to agree on a belt. I just Carlos thought and Helio, from, right? Yeah, I'm like, split. I'm like, there's probably going to be some type of opinion differences. I don't yeah. think they're going yeah. to get all the Gracies to uniformly say, you're now a whatever belt. 100%. So I was like, red flag over there. So I was like, oh, okay. That's pretty good. You put that together back then. That's actually yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Well, that's so a it, and he plays chess. Yeah, he's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, you know, he's that's, thinking ahead. Yeah, like, something ain't right here. That was like the, the first red flag, and it was a pretty heavy red flag for yeah. me. So he had them do warm up, and when they did warm up, it was like no gi, um, uh, and they had like shorts on, t shirts and stuff. Oh, like so Sambo. yeah, he had them run around and do <laughs> stuff like this. So I was like, okay, like this. And then when they went to technique, he was showing the armbar uh, from the closed guard. So I, here's the armbar from the closed guard. So he grabbed the arm and he threw his leg up, but he never changed the angle. And like from oh. my standpoint, though. Of the things I've seen in the UFC with Hoist, mm -hmm. I remember when he armbarred the Kung Fu dude and he got Hip perpendicular. Yes. Yeah, he got per yep. perpendicular. And then I looked at the move too. I was like, his leg looks really silly. It feels like <laughs> the guy could just drop uh. his elbow and he's out. And then that's what the guy was trying to teach. So he's like, all right, so you ready to sign up? And I was like, um, you know, I have to uh, <laughs> I have to check a few more on this list. Uh, my brother insisted that I check these these ones before I you know, uh, uh, decide on it. And then right when I was saying that, it, I could see from his expression that, like, dawned on him he that knew. I know he was full of crap. Yeah. Yep. So I was like, okay. okay. Um, and he just kind of, like, <laughs> got kind of sad. But, like, so you're a savvy consumer. You're, you're yeah, analytical, yeah, it sounds like. Huh? Yeah, it's, uh, I try to analyze situations, even if I don't have much of a background on it. I try to use basic common sense on it. Like, yeah. this doesn't seem right angle-wise. And I think of what I could do, even as a, you know, a person who doesn't know much about it, is like, well, I feel like I could drop the elbow with that right. armbar. Uh, so I was like, okay, I like got out of there. Um, and then the next one I tried was uh, Placer County Grapplers. He was uh, under Cromcrit and Amy. Okay. Uh, he was a brown belt under Charles Gracie. Uh, so I was like, okay, let's try this out. And that one was actually down more towards this area. Okay. It was where uh, near Hazel and uh, mm -hmm. was uh, Douglas. Yeah. So it's just down there a little bit. There was a oh, little court. There was a, a traditional kung yeah. fu place that was run by... Uh, um, I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, Nunez. Uh, I always forget his, uh, his first name. Right. Uh, so it Andy, was in Andy that kung fu Nunez. school. It huh? was in that school, right? A kung fu yeah. School. It was. Uh, it was in there. So there was like a big mat and then like a little tiny. That's uh, how it was cave like yeah. area. Yeah. Right. They separated. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't mainstream yeah. that day. You yeah. didn't see like a jujitsu school unless the Gracies. It was normally the school was, within the school. I was Subak Do in jujitsu. Oh. Yeah. So it was. So was Infinite. <laughs> Infinite was. Uh, what was it? Whatever it was over there. Um, uh, Gus's first school. Yeah. It was. It was in the back. Yeah, yeah. Little jujitsu in the back. They always throw us. I know. Like we're relegated to the back area. We're like the problem children. Like, absolutely. Redheaded stepchildren. It was like kung fu or something. We'll beat them later with. 
with a stick. But uh, the dude was actually really cool. Uh, Andy Nunes was his name. Okay. Um, uh, he was cool. Um, and he had his, his I believe it was Bok Fu, which is like a variant of Kung Fu. Right. And their own twist on it. Um, and then on this little side mat, which was open, uh, there was a little tiny little space that my uh, first instructor, B, uh, would teach on. That's the I nickname he'd go by. Yeah. And uh, at first, it was only uh, B, myself. Uh, there was a, I don't know her name, but she was a purple belt. Uh, so it was pretty highly ranked over there. She, right. she was really cool. Uh, but she was murderously good. <laughs> I feel like, holy <laughs> crap, uh, this is what I'm dealing with. There's some hilarious techniques she did. She did uh, on arm bars, she'd bounce her thigh on your face. Yep, yep. And then you're, the, you're like, it, the earthquake. They call yeah. it, some people call it the earthquake. Like, why can I not do math after this arm bar? This is crazy. <laughs> Shook your fucking brain up. Yeah. <laughs> and even just the lock of the triangle is like blacking out. She didn't do any, any motion for finishing just yeah. locking because she's she's a little curvy yeah, yeah, so yeah, when yeah. she locked you it's just like oh yeah. everything closes in. <laughs> like this is awful yeah, but yeah. let me come back yeah. uh, <laughs> i say some people pay good money for that yeah <laughs> which is surprising <laughs> i need those people for price yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> i charge too low of a Hell rate, yeah. but, <laughs> but um that's where we uh where i start training and okay. he's really cool and the guy andy nunez the one who ran it uh he also do a little training over there he was he was okay he was pretty cool in general um he was real chill uh he ha- he put out like an ad for someone to teach some jujitsu at his school um and then he had someone who came in who i think he uh he said that they said that they were like a, a purple belt or something okay. like that forgot what the rank was but then he he beat them himself he's uh, like yeah you're not oh. that rank he's oh. all yeah this is bull. Oh, yeah. so when my Damn. uh my original instructor came in there b uh, and he rolled with B to kind of like test if he was full of crap. He got destroyed by B, uh, but not in a mean way or anything. Right, just right, right. He, yeah. he knew that this guy is not fake. Yeah. He's yeah. not just, okay. oh, I just respond to the ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the old Dr. Nick from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, exactly. <laughs> but um, so it worked out really well. Um, my first instructor was very, very laid back, and that's um, – for my personality type, I'm a very chill person, and Did that kind of connected better. If he was an extremely regimented uh, person, like you have to do this or that, I probably wouldn't be in jiu jitsu. See, honestly, hundred percent agree with you. It's yeah. like if you get that what, 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 Rex Kwando, bow yeah. your sensei. <laughs> it's like, nah, dude, I can't fuck with that. And yeah. that's yeah. I agree because that's how Hass it is. Mm-hmm. He was laid back, and I think mm-hmm. Gus is pretty laid. Gus back. Gus is chill. Mm-hmm. He's chill. Yeah. He, he 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 has his. He'll go back and forth every now. Sometimes, sometimes he gets hardcore. Sometimes he gets hardcore, but mm-hmm. but he is chill, which is why I stayed at Infinite. Yeah. So let me ask you. So you <laughs> you you progress through your belts, boom boom boom. You're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. I met you as a brown belt. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay. I think I met you as a brown belt. Mm-hmm. And but when you got that black belt, which mm-hmm. I, I saw on Facebook, I wasn't there, but I, I, I congratulated you through, <laughs> through <thanks>. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your black belt. Mm-hmm. And damn, actually, I know you were probably doing it even before Black Belt, but mm-hmm. you you embrace the art and sharing the art, which is something mm-hmm. I have always I I always say when you're a brown belt, you're a black belt, you owe people. It changes the you belt. owe them sharing the art, right? Mm-hmm. Tell us your philosophy or just your thoughts on sharing the art with others because this is your job. This, you you're full time with this. So uh, for me personally, um, when it comes to sharing jujitsu, if you ask, I'll tell you about this. If I catch you in this move or that move and you ask me, I'll be like, yeah, this is literally what I do. This is what I did. This was what I was looking for to catch you in. And I was gauging that you would do this. That's why I trolled you with this particular reaction. Okay, Carl, let me ask you real yes. quick. I, I had to interrupt, though, because I, I don't want to slip this. <laughs> At what belt did you start doing that? In, in other words, being more Good artistic question. with your roles. Oh, like, so it was actually purple belt. Uh, so when oh, I got my when purple, he met you? Yeah. <laughs> oh. no, he was not. A, that's funny. <laughs> so when I got my purple belt, um, I got my purple belt from B, and then I moved up to El Dorado Hills, and I started training oh, with yeah, Elliot yes. Kelly. Okay. So when I got mm. my purple belt, uh, I did not feel super comfortable with it. I was very lopsided. Like I spammed a lot of ankle locks from everywhere. Dig it. I'd even hop off mount to ankle lock you. <laughs> that's like I was pretty proficient with ankle locks. Right. Darces. And then triangle chokes. Oh. Those were my jam. Okay. But the problem with that is because I became so lopsided, if you tried to go to any other position, I'd freak out like crazy. And I'd try to oh, forever route you to those things. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. It just so happened like the luck of the draw that when I went over to EDH, that those three submissions were really good against a lot of people over there. The wrestlers, if they shot in on me, I sprawl and dar some in the shot. Ah, nice. Um, if they pull guard, I'd ankle lock them. Yeah. Um, if they were able to take me down, I'd have close guard and I'd triangle them. So it, okay. for me, nice. I they're, felt they're like feeding yeah. right into your yeah, fucking yeah. Your it moves. Was, it was honestly luck of the draw on that one. Uh, <laughs> but 
one of the things my uh, my middle brother uh, did, Sean, the one who, who trains now, um, what he did is he, he took me aside, and this was pretty early when I transferred over there, um, and then he just went through my whole game of basic core positions. He's like, how do you feel about getting out of half guard or uh, passing this? And I was like, oh, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. And like, my brother's like one of those ones where he hears too many goods. He's like, something's <laughs> up over here. So he's like, okay, you know what? Let's just try it. You got 10 seconds. So mm. I'm going to do mild resistance. If you can get out of it, awesome. If you can't, we move on and so on and so forth. So I did it. And uh, of your core positions, I failed like two thirds. Oh, of shit. So it was like a lot of like, and I'm like, man, he's not even like really resisting. So I was yeah. like, this is not good. So my brother's like, okay, now that we understand where the holes are, um, let's address them. And we addressed it uh, week by week by week. And he didn't charge me anything at all for it. So I took that same approach to <clears throat> when I start teaching. I start teaching at Purple Belt about a year before I got my brown belt. I start teaching it. Okay. Uh, the, I used to work in uh, child support and stuff like that. And nice. uh, it was okay, but um, not my favorite spot. So uh, after dealing with that annoyance, uh, I was like, you know what? Forget <laughs> this. Let me let me be my own uh, boss over here. Let me just yeah. do, uh, do some private lessons over here. And I start teaching. I checked with my instructor at the time, which was Manny uh, from uh, Half Gracie Sac. Okay. Um, if I could teach their stipulations and stuff like that. So he's like, no, you can. Okay. So uh, I set up my calendar. And one of the biggest issues I had with teaching is there was a lot of issues with uh, private lessons at the time. One, I'm a purple belt, and there's like 40 plus black belts in. Right. Sacramento. It's like why pick this guy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was like one of those. <laughs> I don't know about that type of situations. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other issue I found when talking to ones before I officially started was uh, if one they've done privates with other people, and two, what were the issues with said private? If they had any issues, what they liked, what they didn't like. So I quickly found out that a lot of people had really bad experiences with private lessons. Really? Yeah. So there's. I'll give you a, a number of examples. I'm not yeah. naming people, but. Um, there was issues where the person had the person do uh, of an hour uh, of an hour private half of it a half hour of warm up. Get the fuck oh, out of man. Here. Dead serious. That's trash. Yeah, it and is. the moves that they would teach would just be random, like whatever they were working on or whatever they felt like for that day. Uh, they wouldn't. So there's no structure. Yeah, there was no structure. No value, really, huh? And then there was uh, other ones where... Uh, I could do burpees by myself. Fuck yeah, yeah right? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> I am fan to do burpees. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other issue was uh, when they do private lessons. One, the price was insane sometimes. So the price was sometimes double the, the amount of what the monthly fee is. Oh and wow. for some of them, some of them were charging 200, usually around 160. For an hour lesson. For an hour lesson. And you don't know what you're getting into when you go in there. And there was a number of uh, yeah. ones, mind you, black belts. Right. Um, that when they would, they would teach, um, if they were teaching a class, for instance, say a particular individual owned their school and say they were teaching armbar from the closed guard that month there or that week. That's uh, what you learn in the private. And, and you're, you're going to pay 100, 200 bucks to yeah. learn the same shit you were learning in freaking class. Yeah, I, and, and you're one. enrolled in their school. What? Oh, fuck. No, I said fucking <laughs> freaking, <laughs> freaking, <laughs> freaking fuck. I said a lot of time. Okay, sorry. All right, real you, quick, Paul. You were <laughs> enrolled in their school, and they just ran the month's lesson on you. Oh, see, that's But they made terrible. you do exercise, too. And that was another issue with that. And then the other one was uh, I briefly touched on is whatever they felt like. Oh, I was working on this move. So it's not like your main game stuff. It's just something right. You've been it's just some yeah. random bullshit around. that you figured I'm gonna yeah. throw this around and make two hundred bucks. Yeah, and yeah. that's uh. So that was one of the things I want to completely kill whenever I do a private lesson. So, uh, one, if you want to do a warm up, do it on your own time, and yes. unless it's yeah. pertaining specifically to like a, a, a component of a movement. Say we're doing. Uh, Toriano pass to far side armbar. Right. So then I'll have you do like some squats, some leg drag movement, and then we exactly. segue in so you don't pull that like a sense. hammy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like that's the only real reason, it. honestly yeah. speaking. Dude, dude, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So stop you for a second. <laughs> that's how right? I got it. Because, okay. yeah, that's fucking awesome, dude. Because if you, like, we actually talked about people who, like, pick lower belts to mm -hmm. actually teach you at a lower price because mm -hmm. if you're a fucking white belt, Mm -hmm. You don't know shit anyway. Mm -hmm. So having a black belt teach you versus a purple belt teach you when either way you're still learning a basic move, mm -hmm. why pay triple the price? Yeah. I don't know what episode it was, but we talked mm -hmm. about that. And I'm like, hell, like, there's mm -hmm. there's jokers out there. And I'm not going to mm -hmm. name names either. Some mm -hmm. people charge $1,000 an hour. Holy and crap. it's like, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? It's like, And I, and I said, I said, uh, 
well, what are you teaching? A thousand dollars an hour for a fucking arm bar? <laughs> really? <laughs> Better really? throw a Hadouken out there. <laughs> yeah, a fucking Hadouken so, will be something. And show me how to fucking push my chi out into somebody's ass. Right? Cast magic. Teach me the dim ma. Yeah, yeah, the fucking <laughs> dim ma. Show me something. A five finger fucking death touch. <laughs> Damn. Okay, and, so wait. And now, wait, wait. Sorry. And I, I got to fucking throw this out too because I keep saying fuck. And <laughs> before we even started the podcast, I told him, I was like, I don't know. The army fucked me up a long time ago. Um, so mm-hmm. if you people at home do a drinking game and it's ever how many times does Harold say fuck, fucky, or some variation of fuck in a podcast, God bless you. I hope you don't die from alcoholism. But, <laughs> but give it a shot. So yeah. I'm going to actually try to scale it down for this interview. Let's see if it, let's see if it works. Let's <laughs> see who has a, a destroyed liver at the Somebody's end. Somebody's going to fucking pass out. Yeah. Uh, there they go. They're already on that path. You tied them to the train track. Yes, now you're just okay. running them over. All right. I'm sorry, Rog. <laughs> no, no. I was going to say. So having said all that, that's mm-hmm. a good good way to frame it up. So like, who's your target demographic now? So. When for I, privates, for privates. So uh, before I get into that, real brief, so mm-hmm. that was one of the issues in regards to that is I had to make sure that I didn't do all the things that were like, why in the world would you do this on a private mm-hmm. lesson? Right. So I nixed all that stuff. Uh, so then the question came to, what the crap do you I teach? Mm-hmm. So I actually originally scaled it with how my brother taught me, which was I did a thing called a 10-second test. It'd take me five minutes. I even uh, tell a person if I have a pri- private with them. I did that originally because of – the negative feeling associated with privates where you feel like you got swindled for 200. Right. Um, I did the first private lesson free. So if you like it, then you just continue nice. on. And um, so in the first private, you could just come in five minutes early or uh, we could just do that little test. And it takes me five minutes to run over your core positions uh, from passing. And I do light resistance okay. from passing closed guard, open guard, sitting guard, half guard, deli heva, spider guard. Um, uh, you know, going from side to mount and then uh, flipping the turtle or establishing points from a turtle position. Okay. And then the reverse side of either a sweep or submission from these random core guards. And then do you know how to do a takedown? I don't care which, or a double leg or a single leg. And can you pull guard without KOing yourself? <laughs> so I ran through all that. I gave them 10 seconds, mild resistance, and I had That's a piece of paper with all those positions. And I just write down how many seconds it would take him to do that. And oh, if shit. they hit 10 seconds, I put a fail on it. Nothing like uh, really negative, but oh, knowing that you right, right. don't yeah. know anything. You just got to get better. Yeah. So it's a good uh, barometer, right, to see where they're at. Yeah. And I do that as a gauge for one, that way they know what they, you know where your weaknesses are. Yeah, and a okay. lot of times we, uh, like the same way I had with my brother, I thought I was like, oh, I'm the whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm really good on this, this. And then my brother's like, no, you're not, dude. <laughs> like, I'm not even resisting, and you can't get past this position. So um, that allowed me to quickly troubleshoot where the huge holes are. So the uh, idea behind that is I could show you most amazing armbar for mount, but if you literally can't pass any of the most common guards here, you're not getting the point? there. Yeah. yeah. It's like, That's oh, really great. Good. This is going to be good if I can ever get to this Hell position. Yeah. So. What I do with the lessons is because, again, the first one's free, so obviously I can control the content of that lesson. Absolutely. Um, so we just did a simple pass. If there was, uh, like, say you can't pass the open guard of all things, uh, then we'd have something simple and maybe a half guard and then maybe a simple sweep from whatever position, uh, maybe trap and roll from mount if you can't get out of mount when someone's on top of you. And then once we have a, a very simple route established, not too much time on it, uh-huh. and we're not doing a whole bunch of uh, – uh, um, a whole bunch of different passes, just a single just stinking one. pass. Just, right. to, just yeah. he knows the concept Show of how me to escape it. Yeah. Right. Show me something. Show me the fence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but once we establish that particular route, then uh, uh, after you do about three moves and you do like uh, 10, 15, 20 reps, depending on the person's endurance and speed, um, then at, towards the last five minutes of the lesson, I'd redo it. I'd go right back to the beginning, and I was like, uh, okay, right we're going to hold this position, and you have 10 seconds to pass. I'll do mild uh, resistance, and then I have them try a total of three times to pass. And whatever the uh, the average time is, right. or if they fail. That'll give you your pass or fail. Yeah, and then I readjust the time for that. And then the next lesson would be a brief review of that so it stays fresh in their head. And once they have enough of a path to actually get to whatever position, whether it's side control or mount, then I would create a, 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 a control position where they actually have subs off of. Okay. So this would actually create a situation where uh. one's actually saw immediate progress, and then they also had a route to whatever they want to specialize in. So... Um, of all the ones I, I did when I first started off, uh, the first lesson's free. Right. Um, and then, you know, if you want to continue after that, awesome possum. Um, all but one. And I did quite a lot. So at a certain point uh, when I first started off, I had uh, 
15 to 18 private lessons per week. Shit. I wasn't charging a lot. I was that's charging like good. 40 bucks. Dude, that's fucking killer. Yeah, that's really it, good. It was, yeah. uh, it was pretty useful. <laughs> that but, pays bills. And it was pretty consistent. It would go up and down a little bit when it came around to holiday vacation time or when the tournament's coming up, then uh, it'd ramp up. Yeah, yeah. And then right after the tournament, it would scale down okay. because of people recovering, taking yeah. time off and stuff of that nature. But that was a really good way to establish it there. I like um, that. It makes it, sense. It worked well uh, for me. And <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the uh, ladies I know, she's she's black belt. Uh, she was actually a black belt when I met her at oh, Purple shit. Belt. Uh, she's really cool. But uh, she asked me uh, before how many uh, private lessons uh, I did. And I, I told her it was like between 15 to 18. She was like, you're lying. I was like, no, I'm dead serious. And I was like, this is my schedule. I pulled up my schedule. And I was like, see, all over here. Dude. Schedule down. She's like. Wait, like how? She's like, I get like two to three a week, dude, and, you and one cancel. That to scale? Wow. <laughs> yeah, d- yeah. Yo, all right, because I know you. I don't want you to <laughs> get sidetracked because I do want you to answer his question too. But kind of did that. Kind of already answered it though. Your shit is so fucking analytical. Yeah, like, he did. I, he answered it. Like the, the, the <laughs> way you freaking hone in. I on like that, that a lot. I'm. Because no. what I like about it is that... I'm fucking jealous. I ain't going to lie. Like, no, I, I was like saying, I was like, this. You, do that. you know what? I was getting sold on. I'm like, I'm going to take a private car. I'm, I'm, like, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so no, when's your next va- fucking seminar, There's dude? value in it because what it, what I got from it was that he does... The first one's like an assessment, basically. Yeah. And that has value to anybody. It even has value to me. Oh, it's shit. like, bro, I'm a black belt. But like, there's holes in my game. I guarantee it. And I don't really know where they are, right? Like, mm-hmm. I might have an idea. But if I did that, I probably would say, actually, it's this. Mm-hmm. I might think I'm strong here, but I'm really not. So there's I value feel, for I every belt like level. Fucking, so I feel like we're robbing you right I know. now. Dude. <laughs> so the question was, who is your demographic? Yes. It could be anybody could be your demographic. Well, well that, was, like. that was actually the funny thing is yeah. my demographic, when I first started was, uh, and mind you, I'm not a person where, in general, I don't, I don't desire to pillage anyone from this school or that okay, school. I love it does that. not benefit me in the yeah. slightest Dude, bit. I respect a, that yeah. shit like you have yeah. no fucking clue. Like in general too. So like my demographic, uh, the – People I pulled were from a variety of schools all around the uh, area, some from Folsom, some from uh, uh, good, up man. north, everywhere. You had our buddy uh, Killer B, Becca. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Becca and Amy, yeah. Bro. It worked out for me uh, for that, um, the age group. So a lot of times it was uh, the my first batch of people were a lot of ones who were kind of neglected uh, from their – not – not a negative thing on the school, but when they fall into like the less aspiring body right. type. So uh, oh, I, I wouldn't yeah. really get the uh, the young up and comers like okay. the you know the beast because usually their instructor would be like, yeah. man, this guy's going to be the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're it getting is. all the investment. Yeah, and I I wouldn't really get the uh, really hot chicks because there's always someone <laughs> yeah. trying to be like, hey, yeah. come I'm gonna help you. Come here, I'll help you. I got you. He's like, <laughs> I got you. So uh, usually the more. Uh, um, more middle age uh, So you're, you're rocking with the soccer moms. Yeah, yeah. Pr- pretty much. Um, yeah. Which uh, worked out really well because sometimes it depends on the school. Uh, and this is not a knock on any particular school. It's a general – everyone has their own style at the school. Hell yeah. Now, your style may be like a lot of barren bolos to the back, but if you're like a middle-aged person mm-hmm. – and That's like you're not, you're not athlete. rolling up on your yeah, shoulders. You, know, you got yeah. bad neck and yeah. shit. You're a fucking accountant. You're not even going to people, right? <laughs> It'd be very hard to use that. It's nothing wrong mm-hmm. on that, and other people will excel at. But it's just maybe perhaps the wrong uh, match for your body type or Correct. your personal preferences, and vice versa. It can be the opposite way. Where oh, I love spinning under, but I'm, I hate running a top game. So right. um, I try to be adaptable in that respect. So that's where I would be pretty useful for grabbing people from different academy. Now, based on my structure. It is extremely counterproductive if I was to like coax anyone to come train with me. Like, hey, you should go over to my. Right? Like, no, stay where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I do not want that happening. The reason is, yeah. is if I was to, hey, you need to come over here. I try to. Uh, uh, what, what Ultimately, coach, it would hurt. You would hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah, one, I don't get paid nothing from exactly. membership at all. Yeah. Like, exactly. Privates. If you're if you're going to. Uh, the gym I'm at, and you're thinking, hey, I'm going to get free lessons. Hell no. Nah. No, I have bills to pay, and like yeah. your gratitude doesn't put literal food in my mouth. And I then you become the fucking asshole to everybody in the yeah, freaking the, area. Exactly. It's yep. a small community. You yeah, get you dude. where it gets around. Absolutely. So, the, so can, are you welcome to go to other schools and, and do uh, privates at that school? Or how I, does I that try not work? to, uh, because I oh. stack my privates. So I don't know the etiquette. Like, What's the etiquette? So, like, where do you do it? Like, the, so I teach, uh, right now I teach out Bueno Vida, uh, okay. Jiu-Jitsu mm-hmm. Academy in West Sac with uh, Colo Vida. Right, so you have your home base and you have people come to you. Yeah, and uh, okay. it's much easier that way. I did it before brief, very briefly, where I went to other people's places, yeah. but there's complications with it. One, there's travel time, right. um, and then my price would have to increase to yes, compensate. Sure. And then there's the biggest issue I ran into is, you know how talkative I am? 
that can right. mess up schedule. It'll throw like, shit off, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like, we only got an hour, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's just on my side being talkative, let alone the if person they're talking to. Talkative too. Yeah, and you, you did the whole hour where you're just bullshitting. Yeah, it, it, it man, became man, very problematic. problematic. <laughs> See you next week, man. That's Twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it, it became very problematic. I did it for like a couple weeks, and I'm like, nope, we can't do this because I'm. It, it is not financially beneficial, and yeah. it's getting too complicated. And um, there's mm-hmm. also inherent risk. So, right. any place I teach any private lesson at. I have to have a camera there in general. Yeah, this is just smart man. male, female. Damn, no, he's matter. smart, yo. I, I am loving just, everything you're right, saying. Uh, I swear to God. Like, I'm about to get me too. Yeah, fuck <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, you're smart, doing dude. everything right. This so, is beautiful. Fun, funny enough, for my uh, my oh clientele my right now is about 65% women. Um, that's typically how it is. Um, when I first started, it was a uh, near 50-50-ish. Um, it started to increase a lot more on the female side than it decreased. <laughs> just depends. Yeah. Um, but I do not... Like, if I was to go anywhere, male or female, if there's no camera there, I do not teach private lessons. Holy shit, that's smart, dude. It, I like it. No, it's, it's a liability yep. issue. Yeah, I, I'm, it's I'm a liability uh, issue. It's a new although world, I, man. Although, it doesn't mean that I think someone's going to do this or that. Nope. I like Protection. to cover myself. And that's this it. Is that's all, it's 100%. insurance. It, You're a smart just, man. And if I think I can gauge someone and be like, oh, they're totally not. No, I've been like, I've been wrong on many people. I'm like, oh, this person's super cool. I'm like, man, this person's straight up psychotic. There like, it is. What is wrong with this well, person? Because psychos can hide that shit yeah. really well. Yeah. So That's it, what they're yeah. psychos. I, I learned that from fucking working in a prison. Yeah. I've, been, I've been a bunch of psychopaths. That's awesome. one of the attributes of being a psychopath. <laughs> yes. They can hide it. They're and what charming. I <laughs> what I don't want is I don't want anyone with leverage over me. I feel like yep. it's similar similar to like being enslaved to something. You're, like you're shackled because now they will damage this or that because they have have this on yep. you so this is why i always deal with any camera if you have any issue with anything i mean like oh let's freaking dial up that yep. day oh you you said this yep. oh let's see this date oh this time oh look nothing happened oh yeah mm, facts was, over you feelings. know it was like yeah. it was facts like remember when, and feelings. i don't want to drive politics but remember when mike pence back then he said i won't be in a room with a woman like <laughs> yeah i do remember when he <laughs> Yo, said I don't that blame, i'm being honest no, uh, there's been a bunch of hey, jiu-jitsu man. instructors who say that too mm-hmm. you got to be careful i don't this knock them world. i don't knock them for it i understand hey man and i also i i understand even from the other side, where people go, well, you're being too this, that, and other thing. But I'm like, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound it's, of cure. I'd rather right? prevent. It's it. like let's just let's I'd just avoid any it. misunderstandings <clears throat> because <clears throat> that's just how the I'm, language works, man. I mm-hmm. might say something, you hear it, the but perception you, I, the way different. I meant it wasn't what you heard and understood, mm-hmm. and now we're fucked. It's all bad. Uh, Take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give an example. So. Uh, <laughs> Yes. So there's been plenty of times where I'm like, oh, this is funny. And then it pops up in my memory from 10 years later. I was like, man, I was super not funny. I was like, this could have been super misconstrued. Yep. So from that, anything I write, so all my profiles on yep. Facebook and on Instagram are all open, public profiles. So okay. anything I write on there, I'm super okay there it with. Is. And that's, it's open. You know that anyone can look at it, so mm-hmm. you feel you feel secure that you're not going to put some crazy shit out. Yeah, it, it's much easier that way. So you don't have to have these weird, uh, crazy personalities. The now, filters. granted, there's certain mm-hmm. friends I joke with a little bit more than others. And As it should I, be. I do the gauge thing. Like, if they yeah. send me something hilariously yeah. funny, then we kind of go at the same thing. If the person's, like, pretty not that funny of a person, then I'll keep the humor there to that level. But they kind of set that bar yes. over there. Like, I, the I, world I, have, I have extremely dark humor mm-hmm. and... I I always say I'm like look a lot of a lot of shit that I say and think I cannot put it out there because yeah. I'll lose my job. <laughs> like, I just have to chill. The world it's also tonality. Yes, like, yes. You can say something and then someone hears it a little bit differently, exactly, dude. and then they're like, "Man, this person was me." I was like, "Like I don't know what are you talking about, man." I'm like, I was, I was smiling the whole time. You might have to edit. I know. No, let's not, let's not edit. Let's continue on. Because, so here's what I was saying. I do love. How analytical you are! I like I like the structure that you put together for these things. Mm-hmm. So, all right, you're rocking with soccer moms. You're rocking with people who might be overlooked at mm-hmm. a gym that is 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 focusing on their fucking special students. Right? Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, this motherfucker, he's gonna be he's gonna be the next BJ Penn. I gotta pay mm-hmm. attention to him. And then over here, you got the guy who's like, hey man, listen. I'm a uh, I'm, I'm Jake from State Farm. I just want to <laughs> I, I just want to roll a little bit, you know. I want to I want to maybe lose a couple of LBs. It's mm-hmm. like, can, can you help me out? But you know, the mm-hmm. sad thing is, some of those guys, those regular guys, turn out to be really phenomenal. Oh, they become mm-hmm. monsters if you yep. give them the right attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, dude, it's like, this is not magic. Mm-hmm. It feels like magic. Jujitsu feels like magic. Yeah. I was something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if if you don't know it and you mm-hmm. see it, you're like. What they're doing is amazing, right? Mm-hmm. But really, it's like you keep showing up, you'll learn it. There's, yep. I'm, I'm not special. 
I mean, Rod's a little special. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I just heal quick. <laughs> right, you just heal me like Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, jujitsu is a beautiful thing. We argued about this, right? We talked about, is jujitsu for everybody? So, right, right? Yeah. Let, let me, oh, thank you. You you actually gave the right answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. is it really for everybody. They market it like it is. They market it really like it's for not. everybody, but come mm -hmm. on, right? Okay, shit, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going off on all kinds of tangents here, dude. <laughs> no, it's good. Dude. I'm actually, I got to tell you, I'm legitimately excited about this conversation with you. You're, we're, we're killing this shit, so. <laughs> it was good. Um, seminars. You also mm -hmm. teach a lot of seminars, right? Mm -hmm. So, man, I, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to process all this shit in my head, and I'm like, damn, like, that's a lot of freaking privates, right? Mm -hmm. So now you also got your seminars. Do you put the same analytical freaking spin on what you're going to teach at a seminar that you do when dealing with your private. It's got to be a little more. It's got to be different because there's, there's yeah. such a wide variety yeah. of people so, there. So there's a little adjustment I do. So when you, whenever you deal with uh, general class, when you deal with privates, and then when you deal with seminars, you have slightly different audiences. So when you deal with private lessons, I'm quickly identifying whatever the issue is with you, and then I'm customizing the jujitsu around your body type. So in jujitsu, a lot of times people have this crazy notion that I need to learn everything. It's like, no, no, no. Uh, you don't actually progress all that fast if you know everything. Right. If anything, you're dividing up your attention and your yeah. drills and so on and so forth. So you actually kind of get slow. You're fucking giving them too much. Yeah. Uh, what you need to do is develop a specific route that also favors uh, not only your physical body type primarily, yeah. but secondarily, like, your your at, uh, the things that you're good at. Say you're good at wrestling. Say you're very flexible. Say you're this. That <clears throat> allows you to quickly fine-tune your game and just route people into whatever your specialty is. Now, in a seminar setting, I do not have that degree of control. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I cannot, like, everyone's going to be different body sizes, heights, so on and so forth, flexibility. So I cannot make a, a subject so narrow that, like, I potentially, you know, ghost half the people. Yeah, right. They're right. Like, I literally can't bend my leg this way. you got to keep it high level. Exactly. So uh, one of the things I... Uh, did very specifically, there's two two major reasons why I did this with my seminars. So all my seminars, I put a general subject line on it. Tacking, knee on belly, tacking the back. Um, usually I make them s submission based simply because most of the schools have enough passes, enough sweeps, enough of that stuff. Um, but to structure submissions where they're complementary to that, um, a lot of schools at the <clears throat> time when I first started doing it had very little. It was just okay. like random throw up a submission, oh, oh yeah. it didn't work, oh, let's try again, let's start the whole cycle over, let's <laughs> sweep them, pass them right. again, and get to the position, right. and then try and you fall off and start the cycle again. Uh, so what I wanted to do is kind of stack the odds, so all my seminars are usually positional based, and they're usually cohesive techniques that all, if they do this, you do this, if they do this, you do this. And it's not heavily body type based where you have to have a certain degree of flexibility. There is a oh, degree, but like it should encompass the majority yeah. of it. See that's kind of how I teach my entry yes, level class. Yes. Dude, my. You're kind of speaking our language. Yo, man. You're, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I'm having a real fucking good <laughs> yeah, time, dude. Great. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm actually enjoying the shit out of this conversation. But, so, <laughs> yeah, yo, keep, keep oh, going. Uh, keep it going. Fuck that. Keep saying, it going. But that's the uh, primary niche that you want over there. Also, when you do with the progression of the lessons, so one of my drawbacks is I talk a lot. And it's. Uh, I know that fucking pain. <laughs> I know that pain. <laughs> so b before I did uh, uh, seminars, I also did the same thing I did with privates as towards I assessed. Who's gone to seminars? Uh, what was your plus minus on certain ones? Uh, so a lot of the issues you had with seminars is the person, one, you don't know what you're walking into. Oh, it's a seminar. Yeah. Okay. And then they start teaching worm guard. You're like, the oh, God. <laughs> like, yeah. the That's Rod's favorite guard. Yeah. 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 Uh, don't, don't get He's me wrong. He's being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand worm guard, dude. Or, or it's like self-defense stuff. It's this like everyone's not throwing a right Which hook. is my yeah. favorite yeah. thing, for real. That actually is my favorite hey, thing. You, that should tell you what I like right there. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. 50, you got a 50-50 yeah, on the wall. <laughs> That's his jersey right there. But it's like a random, it's like someone had a hat and you pull something out and maybe you're screwed maybe you're not who knows gotcha. it's magical and then you got 50 people in there and mm -hmm. then they go well i didn't want to learn this bullshit yeah and gotcha. yeah so there, there's certain ones so that became uh that was one of the primary reasons with my seminars where i put a general subject line so if you're like man i'm already murdering people with neon belly i don't yeah. even do that i'm not trying to do that then totally don't go to the seminar don't go. It's completely fine i yeah. have it's not going to hurt my feelings yeah um but if that's something you're missing you're like man okay. i'd like to kill with this then go to a seminar. It's literally telling you to go there. So and boom. <laughs> I got to bring this up now because mm 
You said the magic words. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. We thought about this, <laughs> and we were like, <laughs> I was that. like, do I even want to fucking ask him this shit? I was like, because I don't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. <laughs> so, My feelings don't engage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is, dude, I'm telling you, man, you're fucking so much like me in that. That's awesome. So I specifically and particularly myself, mm -hmm. I I am not a fucking seminar guy, right? Mm -hmm. I don't go to seminars mm -hmm. unless it's a seminar out of promotion, right? Mm -hmm. So Hassett, we would we would always have a seminar, still mm -hmm. always has a seminar for every promotion. Mm -hmm. I have never in my life, in 20 fucking three, almost almost 23 years of jujitsu, mm -hmm. paid to go to an outside seminar other than during promotion. Mm -hmm. And the reason was, and this was my point of view, like I can find somebody who knows what the fuck I want to learn at the school, right? Mm -hmm. And and we didn't want to bring it up because we were like, oh, damn it, I ain't trying to fucking, I ain't trying to fuck with your money, right? He was on me. He was like. Mm. Well, we have a bit. Well, so we, we kind of have a difference of opinion in this one. Mm -hmm. And I've, we always have had, you know. For sure. Mm -hmm. So I, I embrace seminars, not 100%. I don't go to every seminar. I go to the niches, the ones that, are, that kind of align mm -hmm. with my style. Like, mm -hmm. Like Ryan Hall, for example, I went to that Ryan. Number one, I just wanted to you know go to a Ryan Hall seminar. I thought it'd be cool, mm -hmm. but I really got into fifty fifty, and nice. I wouldn't have been exposed to that. You know, I would have seen it on YouTube, but I wouldn't have tried it. Mm -hmm. But when you know, hey, I have Ryan Hall showing you fifty fifty, I'm like, this is cool. <laughs> then I bought the thing and I did it. I'm like, and I'm pretty proficient at fifty fifty. I'm not great, mm -hmm. but at least I understand it, right? Mm -hmm. I would have never got that if I didn't go to the seminar. I also mm -hmm. went to that Bendy seminar for knee bars. Oh yeah, I Bro, love that. That was like one of the best seminars I ever. I, I I'm the knee bar guy, dude. dude. Yeah, like that totally got me into knee bars, man. Fuck and yeah. I wouldn't have had that without Bendy. So, mm -hmm. I like, look, maybe I would have learned it now because we have guys that are developed now. So, your argument is this yeah. I know the knee bar, so another guy can learn it from me. That's a fact. Yes. That's a fair argument, right? And but what about before and I, knew I it did? understand your point of view? Yeah. I understand the benefit. I understand the appeal to a seminar because if someone's teaching something that you are interested in, yeah. it makes perfect sense, right? You go after it and you learn it from somebody who's more than proficient at it, yeah. who's an expert at it, right? Yep. I said, my seminars, the ones I always went to, dude, my fucking one-arm guillotine. I learned... <laughs> 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 yeah, you motherfuckers will be drunk yeah. as shit. So, <laughs> my my one-arm <laughs> one guillotine... I learned it at my brown belt promotion. I got mm -hmm. uh, promoted to brown belt. It was Stephen Plyer, and I still teach that oh, yeah. freaking guillotine. See, I said freaking. He's a UFC fighter, is he? No, 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 no. This is a guy. He's, he's a dude out of Delaware. He's uh, with Team Balance, black belt. Okay. Cool fucking guy, dude. But he taught that one arm guillotine. That is a good one. And that is the <clears throat> only way one. I even show guillotines <clears throat> now. Oh, I say, nice. you hit this guillotine, and you can wave to the fucking crowd <laughs> as you good. choke them over out, right? <laughs> so, uh, so I get it. There mm -hmm. are some cool shit you can learn in seminars, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess, okay, fuck. I guess maybe this is what it is. Maybe I'm just cheap as shit. <laughs> 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 Maybe yeah, that's what it is. All it right, fine. It might be fine. That. I'm a cheap bastard. I don't like spending money. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> you mind if I give a little input Please. on uh, seminars? So, uh, for me on seminars, I like targeted seminars, and I have low expectations. I don't want to sound like <laughs> a, a, a punk or something. But that's cool. I, I go into seminars expecting to get nothing out of it. Um, okay. And then when I go in and they show a little detail here and that, I'm like, man, this made the expenditure fantastic. And I agree. And that's how I look at it from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. The same where, like, if I drop food or something, I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. Uh, let me think. I make a lot of terrible purchases. I'll just chalk that up as one of those. Yeah. So it doesn't really affect me personally. It doesn't gotcha. make me, like, gotcha. emotionally sad. But, you know, if I go to a seminar, I don't expect anything, but I'm pleasantly surprised if I get something. The other thing when I think of seminars, at least from how I try to do them now, is it's not just the, the moves that are taught. It's also how you interlock them together as I whack the mic. Hey, man, but that's, it, what it, that's what it's it, here for. Yeah. <laughs> if a seminar shows you how to link certain moves together where it's not just throwing a dart okay. blindly into a wall, uh, then it's very valuable. So even if the moves aren't like, say, your, um, your cup of tea, right. um, you may have a different move for a similar situation that you can then replug in. I agree. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, so well, cause here's how Rod, I, mean, I don't want to speak for you, but yeah. Rod mm -hmm. takes, a, takes a similar vein of, of teaching where we go, 
I teach concepts more than yes. the moves themselves, right? Mm -hmm. yes. I'm like, when I teach most of my moves, I go, here's where we get to, and from this point, here's like seven different things you can do exactly. from here, right? So, yeah, so shit. If you're getting a seminar like that, fine, spend your money. I don't teach moves seminar. where it's like, okay, you do this, and the guy gets the underhook. Like, if he doesn't get the underhook, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. I don't do that because he may mm -hmm. not get the underhook, and then what? Your mm -hmm. whole thing didn't work. Yeah. So I teach more conceptual jujitsu. That's mm -hmm. just the way that I do it. Absolutely. All yeah. right. So, and now it sounds like you actually go to seminars a lot too. I, I do try to go to them when my schedule permits, okay. but I'm also a very logical person that if I have a whole bunch of private set up for a particular day right. um, where I it could be like a four or five hundred dollars in that day and then I have to cancel them to then it's not worth it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm like I want to, but I have to be very sure of what's being taught. Um or it has to make financial sense to me. Again, I'm not like a uh, an emotional person, if, if so it, it has to make logical sense for the exchange to take place for me. Like so, or as the old, I know he really is. That's what I'm saying. I'm sitting here. I'm like, I'm, like, like I'm, geek, I'm geeking oh the fuck God. out right now. You gotta, yeah. Except this herald doesn't curse. Yeah. That's the only difference. I mean, or not as you much. Know what? So, so I'm like, if we got caught in a transporter, I'm the one that comes out with a fucking goatee. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm the evil one. You're the evil one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the evil one. <laughs> oh my God. So, what I was about to say was, basically what he said was, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, I have to kind of run it that way. And, you know, there are, like, for instance, uh, there are certain cases, like uh, one of my students that I taught for a while, uh, he was injured uh, from his work uh, injury, his shoulder, uh, had to go in for surgery. So uh, in, in his case, sometimes I'll do... I'll waive something to help them recover okay. specifically because I know that if they did a normal class, they would most likely get re-injured. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be harder for me to imagine them not getting re-injured yeah. uh, than for them to, you know, be okay. So um, I'll do certain things randomly for ones to help them get through certain things. But for the most part, most of the things I do are based off of a simple exchange. Okay. If it doesn't make sense financially or the investment of a particular <clears throat> seminar, I'm very wonky about whether I'm going to actually get a good return on my investment, which yeah. is knowledge. Um, and if I'm wonky on that, then it, it's like gambling. It's just not really worth it for me. <laughs> right. So yeah. then I'll be, I'll be selective that way. But uh, as towards going to seminars versus not going to them, I usually try to as long as it's within the scheme of, you know, dollars and cents. Hell yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is who is someone that you really admire in jujitsu? Professional guys, like, is there anyone? Are you that, talking? Uh, at, what do you mean by admire? top level? Top level guys, like, are you like a you know a Gordon Ryan guy? Like, who do you like? Who do you like at the, up, the upper echelon of jujitsu? So, uh, mm -hmm. when when I deal with admire, I I compartmentalize things. Uh, so there's uh, <clears throat> technique uh, that is just really ridiculously good. Then there's a personality that person mm. uh, puts out there. Then there's how a person runs a business. Uh, so there's many aspects to jujitsu in a general sense that I, I look at, and I don't like to say, oh, this person's the best. It's like they may be very good at a particular category, yeah, but kind of okay. sucky at the others. For so sure. from a technique and uh, from a technique standpoint and where I can implement uh, pretty well, um, I would have to say one of my favorite is Gordon Ryan because okay. he's a troll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't want to sound mean but like he does stuff really slow and it's very easy to follow and he's a troll so he repeats it multiple ah, times okay so it's very easy for me to see there's a number of different ones like Kyle Terra is also a really great Dude, one love Kyle Terra. Oh, yeah. um but sometimes when you do it certain guys who are very high level on their um on the camera they they don't troll as hard as Gordon and they do stuff relatively fast and mm -hmm. you miss certain key details you gotta run that shit back a thousand yeah. times I'm like I hate rewind I, I hate rewind I hate free sure. ah, <laughs> you sure. wanted him to say it you wanted oh, him to no, say it I, I enjoy him too I, I highly enjoy him I think he's really cool I got a picture with him over at uh, uh, Worlds okay, uh, over cool. there uh, super cool dude he, he made, uh, took time out of his day to read a whole bunch nice. of people a long line and I was like man he's better than like he ever seems like a good he's dude he's a guy out of my school, uh, team balance I think he's a team he's balance guy too yeah. nice. like the ultimate mm -hmm. like sportsmanship you know he's just so yeah. humble when he when he competes he's yeah. greeting the guy and he's nice and when he wins he's, mm -hmm. he seems very humble See, so, damn. Now, all right, keep going because then we were, I feel like we're about to start rapid firing questions <laughs> at your ass so, <laughs> so from a technique standpoint Gordon's more my way because um, I hate hitting rewind right. I really hate that fundamentally oh, yeah. uh, it's as bad as editing for me I just hate Facts. editing stuff over and over. Slow just that shit time. down. Yeah. Uh, from a personality-wise uh, uh, standpoint, I, I like M Mikey Musumeci's okay. uh, personality as towards how he's he doesn't like 
you know, crap on people 24-7. Yeah, like, right. Oh, this guy's uh, – he. There's a certain degree of respect. It's no drama. Yeah. It's no yeah. jujitsu drama. And he's like, you know, give a certain degree of respect, but he's also not like so caught up in stuff that he's like getting bent out of shape with every right. little thing. Uh, so I like that uh, in particular. Um, and when you do it like uh, schools being run in a relatively sane manner, and when I say sane, I mean you're not running a straight up cult because there's right. many ways oh. you can oh, run man. a school. You can run it as a cult. You can run it as a dating uh, yep, spot. Yep, yep. You can run it into the ground. Yep. <laughs> there's many different ways we that you can. We had a whole run episode it. on Jiu-Jitsu a cult. cult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's a always a fun one. <laughs> so I, I like people who have a. They give a option of structure but they're not so hard on the schools where they try to basically micromanage it and they're also not in the manner where they're running a cult where they try to take jujitsu from an art that builds people up and gives them the tools to deal with their daily life or stress relief yeah. to inserting themselves into that person's right. life and then trying to manipulate, uh, yeah, manipulate them control them control who they talk to make them enemies mm. with their friends that's very cult like to me and it's not productive okay. um and it's just it makes people not want to continue jujitsu <clears throat> in general and uh, yeah. um my feeling is uh i've never i've taught many many people so to give you an idea i've taught uh since i started at purple belt teaching private lessons i've taught over three thousand private lessons wow. Fuck, i've taught dude. over 30 <clears throat> seminars um and from my standpoint there's been ones who continue with me, ones who've gone to different schools, ones to, I, I don't really care. What I like from my standpoint is that you have the structure uh, from how I uh, designed your game or gave you feedback on your game that whatever school you go to, you have your tools to go all the way up the belt scheme to black right. belt. And you're not just hitting a wall at blue belt and then you quit yeah. Yeah. because you're like, <laughs> how do I get to purple? I, yeah. I just, I'm randomly crappy at everything. I, that's a failure on my side as a, uh, uh, a private a instructor. teacher. Well, yeah, dude. It's a little different when you deal with like a general class. When you deal with general right. classes, a lot of people and you can't, necessarily there's ways you can mitigate that and you can kind of give it a small class format it. despite being big um there's ways to go around that but for the most part if you're a private instructor and your literal job is to help remove these blocks from them they're paying you literally to do this make yeah. me better yeah me specifically yes I, I feel like it's a failure on my part is if i don't you know granted we have a number of lessons not one right, right. <laughs> but <Yeah>. if, if <laughs> If I we do a number of lessons and you do not have the tools to make it to black belt, there's uh, there's you know life gets in the way. But from a uh, mechanic standpoint, there should not be an issue for having the tools to route yourself to a black belt where you have a developed game, you have a way to get there, you, you have a way to improve, and you understand how you can improve your moves. Hell yeah! Um, and that's one of the uh, other things that I'm a, a big proponent of is uh, I hate when. Uh, not hate as in I throw rocks at you. But I, I, I hate the concept of when someone's like, I'm not good at this. Or, oh, I suck at this. Oh, right, okay. Right. What part? So usually I'll use a, a triangle choke as an example. You have your entry. You have your transition to your finishing position. You have your ability to control said finishing position. And you have your finishing of that position, like how you strangle the person. Hell yeah. So whenever you're like, man, my triangle suck. Okay, what part failed? There you go. So was it your entries? You just can't hit it? Oh, oh. they're popping out during your transition. Oh. Uh, you can't hold the finishing position. Right. You can't finish it with your mechanics. So analyze where it is. And when you analyze it that way, you can yeah. quickly understand, man, dude, I got like 90% of the move right. I'm just missing this one last part. 10%. Yeah. Dude, and for sure. This Reverse is engineering. Basically, wait, wait, right? wait, wait, I say? Trap, retrap, mm -hmm. angle, finish. I mm -hmm. freaking make, the, I make them understand that. And the funny, yeah. the funny thing with it is there's a lot of times people get too hard on themselves. They're like, oh, okay, man, I just, I'm not good. And then there's the reverse verse where you're like i just need more reps i'm going to do a thousand reps i was like but you don't know what a you're thousand missing. bad yeah. reps is fucking gonna build you got bad results yeah. says, i can't do triangles i don't have long legs right. like they That's automatically bullshit. discount That's themselves your right angle you get the angle you yeah. can make it work yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very i find that very 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 important to uh add that in and that helps out um not just with teaching um but as an instructor it, it it builds like a a good reputation in that manner because people are getting their money's <clears> worth i like I don't mind people charging high amounts, but you better have product to go along with Damn the high right. amount. Make that shit worth it. Yeah. yeah, and even if you charge low amounts, you still need product, or else it's a swindle. Or exactly. It's a theft. Otherwise, yeah. you're just going for big numbers, and you're still robbing people. Yeah, and, you're, and, and you're trash. I don't mind if someone charges a lot. I don't even care if they charge a lot, like a lot, a lot. But you need to provide a product. If you don't, 
it's a swindle. And I think that's that says more to the instructor's character. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. I'm about to say, the fucking integrity that you were pointing out right here is solid. Yeah, it is. Like, it's solid. ridiculously solid. Mm. Shit. I, like I said, I know I can keep, I can, I can keep back, and, back and forth with you, dude. <laughs> so, so here's another thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we had I had asked you about like competition. Mm-hmm. You competed before. Went around. Did you kind of like say, "Hey, I'm going to move from competition and get more deep into instructing"? Oh, so uh, I did a couple competitions. So so results. Um, and then a little super fight. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't like that one because I was doing a lot of uh, development for posters and a whole bunch of stuff for the promotion. Okay. So it was taxing my time, and also I wasn't able to do a training camp. Uh, Right. Which is not great, and it became more apparent because of how many private lessons I was teaching a week, 15 uh, to 18. At a certain point, I was man, teaching 23 in a week, and like I literally wow. – and I'm also training multiple classes right. per day. So it made sense That's, to fucking get away from get, that, yeah, you yeah. and you go to where you – Make a decision. Go, go to your strong side. Yeah, yeah. So go to your strong side. It, I, it's not that I don't have an issue with competing. I actually don't mind, but it has to be monetarily worth it, or I will not allow it. That's because, the thing with jiu though. There's no money in it, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to clear two weeks. Weeks, uh, at least two uh, weeks for a so training you need camp to make enough nutrition. money to fucking to uh, make up for what you'll lose yeah, yeah. to train. I cannot be in the red. Yeah. I, I tell you that right now. And then you also I don't blame them. the injury risk and stuff yeah. for a little you plastic work. gold thing. Yeah, you are, right. You're awesome. Yes, yeah. for that plastic <laughs> gold. We always argue that. Yeah. Damn. And this, this is one of the things that uh, really annoy me to death. Is like I'm very logical on a lot of stuff, and I my brain will not allow me to do certain things that are not. Uh, logically um, correct. If it's, so, shit's not sound, you ain't fucking with it. Yeah, it's, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. I cannot run this risk. Like, this doesn't make sense. Doesn't make yeah. sense. And like, even if I went, oh, great, but does that guarantee that I'm going to get more private exactly. lessons? I'm already maxing out. There I already is. have a wait list. Right. So, so it's like, like, what is this belt? What is this little gold fucking medallion going to do for me? Or yeah, worst case scenario, you do the competition, get injured, now you're and out. Now, yeah. Right now, you can't even now teach you can't your fucking teach. lessons. Yeah. Granted, Holy I shit. have a whole bunch of different ways. I, I've been tweaked before. Not like in surgery. I've right, never right. actually had to go to a surgery Me either, thank at God. all for <laughs> jiu-jitsu. There's a but, knock on wood. <laughs> but there, there's things where you've been tweaked, and I have to adjust the lesson, unbeknownst to the person I'm there teaching. Because I'm like, I really don't want to cancel and refund, so oh, yeah. uh, I'll adjust the lesson. It's still a high-quality lesson Absolutely. for them, and they integrate they're it. They're still just, getting something. They're, yeah. getting, they're progressing. Mm-hmm. You just have to make the adjustment for yeah. yourself. It's I just totally can't have you fall on my arm or something yeah. silly like that. So, um, but that helps a, uh, out a lot. And from a competition standpoint, no issue with that. It's just it has to make sense, and it has to be equivalent to two weeks worth of canceling, right? Just to be in black. Okay. And it, yeah. so there's a certain minimum pay, and then there's also that's just getting black. Yeah. And then you have the risk of being injured or being out for X amount of time. So I have to factor that in. So yeah. uh, I, I have no problem with competing, but I also have to make sure I'm not giving the person I'm going against the world's easiest win because my <laughs> arms are so jacked yeah. up. So. Yeah. All right. Like I said, we're rapid firing this shit. So you also train competitors, right? Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. So usually when we uh, one, I need a little bit more he- more of a heads up with uh, competitors. So if you're like, hey, can you give me some competition training? I'm going in three days. I'm like, <laughs> okay. okay. Was like, I don't know about that shit. I- I'm not that magical, bro. <laughs> like, if I was that magical, I'd be making a lot more right, money right? Exactly. Uh, than I am. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people be exactly. people cut off my foot and tie around their neck. Yeah, exactly. And rub it for good luck. <laughs> a lucky Carl's foot. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm bleeding out pretty heavily right now. But um, so, like, you have to give me at least a, a few weeks to structure it. Number two, uh, one of the other things that's very important, uh, there's a limit on how I can structure your, your comp training. Meaning, if you're new and you have nothing developed, like you have, like, no moves or anything, there's not a lot I can do outside of, you know, general escapes. And one of the things that people don't realize when they deal with competition training is as you get really close to your competition, you cannot add new stuff yep. in. That is Rod the world's pointed death that out kiss. big time. Rod yeah. was pointing it out before. He said, "You can't change." Yeah. There's an old saying: "You can't change a horse in midstream." <laughs> <laughs> you you can tweak things. Like right. I can tweak, say, your hand placement's a little wrong here, or just tiny little things. I can uh, tweak it and I can uh, link things together. Your sequence yeah. of moves. I can speed that up. I can uh, do that strength training, so on and so forth. Preferably not that, but uh, usually right. I can speed things up for you. But if you do not have the actual tools for it, um, and it's that Good. close to a competition, I'm like, okay, you could do that, and you know, 
Who knows? Maybe you get struck by lightning or your, your <laughs> opponent does, and then you right. win that way. It's like, congratulations. Yeah. So you're playing Z-Guard. You could, instead of framing here, frame here a little bit. Right. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's, it's Don't the go to nuance. deep half if it's you're not really nuance. a deep half guard player, yeah. but now you're going to okay. do that for this competition. It wouldn't make sense. Yeah. All right. so, Shit. I'm, I'm still rapid firing. I'm sorry, dude. Because I, I got, <laughs> So here's the next one. Oh, wait. Oh. No, fuck it. No, I'm not going to stop uh, you. Go. Fire. But, go. but when, when I do the uh, competition training, uh, it's not just, oh, let's roll more. It's you section down uh, your training. So you deal with your stand up your stand-up game and then once your stand-up game you link it to your passing game whether it's close guard half guard or knee shield uh, or spider guard okay. and then we deal with going to your core area of control which may be mount maybe it's the back maybe it's side control uh, north south side control um and then you're spamming your submissions over and over and over and you should not have like 18 different submissions it should be like three oh, three that are said, pretty we consistent um we literally just said that for the fuck, <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you have to deal with the reverse situation. I like to run an 80 20, meaning 80% um, is you're dominating, Dude, I linking swear stuff. you're saying everything we say all the time. This is. Okay, 20%. Can, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. I, I think I know fucking jujitsu again. <laughs> 20, 20% would be uh, bad position training. But one of the big issues I noticed very quickly is people would spend so much freaking time on bad positioning that they would just play a very passive. Uh, uh, role and they'd expect to get taken down. They'd expect to, but it's like, dude, even they if they don't see that shit before it even starts. Yeah, like even if they don't sub you, you still mm -hmm. lost them points, like exactly. yeah. almost 100% yeah, exactly. of the time. So, so if they just hug you, you lose. Yeah, you, you want to play more aggressive. You want to play generally a top game or a sweeping game real yeah. quick, and you want to play the odds to your favor. That way, in case no sub happens, you're still killing them on points, exactly. and you have generally competent position. So I usually run at 80, 20, 80% 80 your top game doing your game, passing, sweeping, so on and so forth. Um, and 20% bad position training. Now, bad position training is a little offset. I set that after we run your heavy, whatever game it is, top game, uh, your whatever it is. Uh, after you run it, then we go bottom uh, side bad position. So side control. Say we have escape from uh, side control. You bridge, right. hip escape, and you're not just recovering because one of the things that happens a lot is, especially with kids, but primarily everyone, um, is that, oh, you've recovered. Now the person's trying to pass you again. Absolutely. And if everything, say no points are established, they're still the one initiating, so they're probably yeah. going to get, get the advantage, nod. Even at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah for they're, sure. They're probably getting the nod, and they're probably going to win everything. So when you recover, you should be recovering into something simple yep. that can sweep them or something. You yeah. need to recover to something. That way it gets them from blitzing you with yeah. offense to be like, oh, crap, I'm about to get, and then they go to Recover defensive. with aggression. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. It's a very important thing. And once you do that, then you can recombine it. Even if you recover to a sweep, you can then recombine it into whatever your main game is. Maybe it's mount uh, mount triangles or you know arm bars or whatever the crap it is. Okay. Um, you're linking it into after you sweep. So that's how you, from my standpoint, that's how you want to divide up your competition training uh, uh, for an individual private is that. And then you deal with the, the <clears throat> top side, deal with the passing. Then you, you section it off so you can get a ton of reps in it. Then you link it together. Right. And then you continue on that way. So, uh, All right. Still okay, rapid. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say rapid fire. Do it. For, okay, so for normal guys like hobbyists that are training uh -huh. in there, which is the majority of, of practitioners, I mm -hmm. would say, right? What are your thoughts on, like, the cadence of the role? Um, like, how, how, how aggressive should you be rolling? That What would yield the best result, basically? Um, and how often should you go, like, I'm going to go balls to walls, or now I'm going to just mm -hmm. chill? Like, what are your thoughts on that? 80-20. Um, uh, so okay. there's a lot of people who... It's uh, close to ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We say 70-30. We say 70-30. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. Close. laughs> it, it depends on uh, the person. But the thing to keep in mind is, uh, what is a sustainable pace? So uh, that question should be in everyone's head. If, uh, let me put it in the terms of running. If I told you... Okay, wind sprint. How long can you wind sprint? Hmm. Well, About 20 45 seconds. seconds tops, right? <laughs> yeah. Where you're just the wall, yeah. I'm an old man. How, I ain't going that far. <laughs> Whatever. How long you can, can do you like jog? six hours. <laughs> How jog. long can you jog? For an okay. hour straight. There we go. How about walk? <laughs> Forever. Yeah. yeah. So uh, similar is when we deal with our jiu-jitsu is if you are wind sprinting, so going so hard, you still have to have that gear in mind because you need to kick that up, especially in comp. But you also have to have a lot of the other gears, and you should probably put a, a bigger focus on some of the mid-range gears okay. um, a lot more because it also reduces a potential for entry. You yeah. can sustain it a lot longer. It doesn't mean that you don't go hard, but you have to put it in its proper place okay. because also as you get older, that that time, like when I said 80-20, yeah. it will be probably closer to yours where it's, right. you know, 
far less. Yeah, you're dropping um, it down, 70, 30, yeah. If, if, you're, if you're a kid, then you can put a little bit more focus. So it, it's very important to adjust it Makes appropriately to, to your body. Yeah. And, again, thinking of it from a sustainable pace, there's a, a number of different gyms I'm uh, very well aware of, and some of them run their classes insanely hard. And one particular gym, almost every single person who's gotten a black belt there uh, has sustained a massive injury mm. on them where they had to go into full surgery. Oh, screw that. Yeah, That's and too much. It, yeah, it's yeah. the pace. And this is not just the black belts. A lot of their members get severely injured. And I'm not talking about, oh, my right. fingers jam. Yeah, yeah. It's a little crickety. Oh, shit, my ACL's going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, shit, my fucking shoulder's going. I'm in a out. wheelchair. Oh, and my, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, oh, do you compete? Damn. No, I don't compete. Yeah. It's a hobby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was saying, we're a fucking hobbyist, right? Yeah. I do this for fun. Like, I'm in a wheelchair now. It was a hobby, in yeah. quotes. <laughs> or like a little asterisk mark where you yeah. see the yeah. referral of what it's <laughs> really? talking about. But that, that is the thing that you have to you have to have all those gears. Like I'm not going to roll with a kid at like a hard level because yeah. they're a kid, yeah. Yeah. or like uh, a new super new person who's hasn't done anything physical in their life. I'm not going to go like Abu Dhabi level. Absolutely. Yeah. But you need to have that because if you don't have the gear to step it up, if Correct. someone goes really hard, say in a fight, an altercation, yeah, and you're super passive, yeah, that can be very problematic and cause you that could severe be the injury. end of your life. Yeah. And, yeah, and so you do need that, but you have have to adjust your training over there again think about sustainability if you go that hard that often you're going to wear down your muscles you're going to be more prone to injury things getting caught Joints. or injuring the other person yep. so you need to have a balanced view on that and it's it changes from person to person but as you get older you need to kind of reduce yeah. that high and level yeah yeah and uh i yeah, just i just can't go i can go to high level but right. not for a shorter period of time though right mm -hmm. so oh, i can yeah. explode to something catch a move and then i'll Rod, bring Rod back will to give a job. you will give you those first three freaking rounds mm -hmm. and it's like i'll try to bring it's it, like but. if he dies he dies <laughs> right i'm like shit and he's like hey man i'm gonna chill for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> no but but there's you're right though because there's the, there's uh you can get caught into being lazy yeah. right and then you can just you start going mm -hmm. too slow, mm -hmm. you know. So that's yeah. See, you know, and I fucking I look because okay. you could be really defensive. Your your game could be tight, right? You're really mm -hmm. defensive. You're I resemble that fucking remark. <laughs> like, you're right, and it's easy to get caught up in that because no one can catch you and stuff. And, you're like, and right, I don't feel good, threatened, yeah. so I start to just chill too much. Yeah, it could happen. and then I realize I'm always fighting in chill mode. Yeah. right. And it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. So then when somebody does show up mm -hmm. and they're a monster, I'm like, fuck, yeah, I wasn't ready tough. for it, and mm -hmm. that's bad. All right, look, we're still rapid fire. I'm sorry, Rod. Hold on. Go ahead. So, jujitsu, mm -hmm. this beautiful thing that we love. Sport or a martial art? Oh, I was going to ask him. Oh, oh shit, Rod. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No, you're the one that made it up, so let's. let's sport or a martial art? So. And I know you're going to say both, but if you say both, you've got to break it down. So, I think when you. The. The martial art of jujitsu is a very large, encompassing one. Um, it encompasses, uh, obviously, your self-defense, and it encompasses even silly things like worm guard. Uh, so you're very sp uh, sportive uh, side of things, and then <laughs> like you deal with <laughs> silly things. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, God loves worm guard. Yeah, uh, you, do not love worm guard. You have sport, and you have um, your self-defense uh, side of it. Um, it's important to know both. And usually, so I did for a bit uh, combat jujitsu class, and oh, that man, one, I, yeah, yeah. a couple I things I didn't. That shit. Yeah, a couple Ooh. things I didn't want is Gracie in combat jujitsu. I don't want people teeing off on each other's face where they're getting hearing loss or their right. retinas getting yeah. pulled out by nail. Um, so one of the things we did is if you can make contact, you can, but it has to be slow, yeah, deliberate yes. palm strikes. Oh, yeah. So if I can, not like this, you're yeah. not tapping. Yeah, right, right. Uh, if I can do slow, deliberate palm strikes on you, then that could have been devastating blows. So what yeah. that did is it quickly adjust some people's viewpoints. There's, as an example, uh, one particular guy, uh, I won't say names, he's a cool dude, but um, he would- Say names! Never. No, never. <laughs> no, but he was like the world's strongest turtle. So whenever okay. he roll, he'd be a big butt ball, and then people would try to take his back, and then he'd eventually shake them off, For sure. and then he arm bar them. Spin into it, yep. Yeah, and uh, he didn't really see anything wrong with that. And in jiu-jitsu, like, he'd lose a lot of matches because of points for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I don't have a problem with the person going turtle, but understand it should be a temporary thing. It's a transitional, it's a transitional move. move. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. And he was yeah. running it as his Ryan entire game. <laughs> it, he was, like, straight spamming it as his entire game, and he was 
pretty muscular and be really tight. All right. So, which, again, it, I don't have a problem as long as you understand in a fight. It's a quick transitional, and hopefully you don't go there Back type of head. position. Like, you need to wrestle up. You need to do something. Pull. Yeah. I, I don't even care. Do something. You can't be there. So, uh, at the time, there was a particular guy who was running combat jiu-jitsu. So, I highly recommend it to the turtle guy to go to combat jiu-jitsu. Give that shit a try. Being, yeah, because I, I told him many times, hey, you might want to do something from there. And, like, it's one ear out the other. And he's yeah. one of those kind of more hard-headed ones. Not in a negative sense, but uh, until he physically feels it, it uh -huh. doesn't really, you know, it doesn't take into his head. That hard head makes for a soft ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, he went to the combat jiu-jitsu class, and he got turned into a bongo. There over you there. go. And he still kept trying to do it for a few classes, and then he finally started to open up. And that was the thing. I was like, see, this is kind of like the reason. And, like, to me, combat jiu-jitsu isn't super important, but it's very – it's a good indicator. If someone can turn you into a bongo, yeah. you need to fix your position. I Like, for instance, I don't have an issue with half guard in a fight if it's for half of a second. It's an yeah. active. Yeah, it's like, an active half guard. Like, you shield immediately Boom. wrestle up and Dig then – Dig under, fucking yeah. get a sweep, yeah. get to a better position. Yeah. If you're resting in a half guard, you're going to get uppercut oh, yeah, hammer-fisted, all sorts of silly like, stuff. It'll be like a ludicrous thing, yeah. just throw them bows. <laughs> exactly. Bom, 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 you're going to get, get it. You're going to get leveled. Same is with the close guard. If your close guard is a lazy one, and a lot of times in jiu-jitsu, we can get away, we have strong legs, and we just sit there like we're at the beach. Yeah. And, and you put your hands behind your yeah. head. <laughs> God, I hate that. I and then you wonder why you get punched in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, and there's guys who incorrectly <laughs> think, oh, I have a, I have a good close guard. It's hard for people to pass. But it's like, but you're not Face doing punch, anything. Yeah. You're literally sitting there. You're not doing the most basic. The most basic, basic is you break their posture. Yeah. So they can't Use hit the crowd. Use your legs. Throw them forward. Get that fucking buddy hug. Hug them down. Yeah. And stop them from punching you. Just because we're not beating you right now doesn't mean you can't get beat. And I, this is where I create a, uh, a <clears throat> distinction on certain things where, you know how with Henner, uh, Gracie, he mm -hmm. talks about oh you know if you're this or that uh you, you could possibly get me up yeah no doubt um <laughs> I, I completely agree if if you're like man my jiu-jitsu will save me in a fight but you don't know a single takedown then what is the mechanism that you're taking the fight to where you specialize yeah um, imagine a boxer who is like oh i'm really good with boxing but let me lay on the ground it's like yeah this right. is the opposite. So much, so much for that boxing shit. Yeah, so silly. <laughs> but you have to have the mechanism for your art to work in a in a fight. So uh, anyway, going back to jiu-jitsu, I have no problem with like sport jiu-jitsu when you're using lapel stuff, but you need to think of it as an auxiliary weapon, like an extra okay. thing. You should not make your whole game based off of them having a really long rope oh, attached yeah. around their neck. Oh, and yeah. then you can use that to that. I don't mind if you <laughs> use it, but you should have your core <laughs> basics of it. Like, you should know how to do a frame. Your frame shouldn't be bent or uh, completely spawned uh -huh. off of cloth yeah. being wrapped around. Um, and I found this out, humorously enough, the hard way when I started teaching no gi. And I did a lot of gi for a while. <laughs> and I had, like, a two-week notice uh, before I started teaching no gi. I was like, oh, crap. So I had to go through my head all the, my positions. Right. And I was like, does this even work in no gi? So there I was like, go. let me just try. And then... I was gripping something that didn't exist, and I yeah. faced it on the person, and I was like, well, this is awkward. This shit doesn't work. <laughs> so I had to redo my whole game. It was really annoying. So yeah. I, what I did is I tweaked all my jiu-jitsu to generally work uh, in gi or no gi. So there's there very is. little difference. So that's, that's my game. That's how we do it, yeah. That's my fucking yeah. game, 100%. So the point I'm getting at here is if you teach jiu-jitsu in the manner that it works in gi and no gi, and if someone has a gi on or if they have no gi on, it's – the person who's learning it can do slight modifications to make yep. it work, then you're pretty A-OK -okay in a self-defense scenario if you also understand distance management and you know that you can't be lazy there. If you're a lazy person in an altercation, you're going to eat a ton of Hell elbows, damn, yeah. head butts, and you're going to swallow some teeth. Yeah, and yeah. that's the problem. Is if, if, you can make, <laughs> if you can teach your jiu-jitsu in that manner, then your jiu-jitsu covers the whole scheme of things. Okay. If you can't and you're teaching worm guard this and you never teach a person how to properly frame, you're going to have issues and all your students will have this confidence that they can defend themselves. But in reality, they can only defend themselves against people with large pajamas yeah, that's, or, that, or uh, long coats. Right. right. That's been Harold's hoodie. philosophy, man, since I met this guy. He teaches it the same way, whether it's gi or no gi. Like his gi is not predicated on, on big, heavy grips. No. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of a little bit because I, I kind of rebelled. I started doing no gi, mm -hmm. all no gi. Like when I got my, I think I was like late purple belt. Mm -hmm. So I did no gi for like four years, but then I did a lot of gi for like seven years, right? So mm -hmm. I do both, but 
I would say I'm a little guilty when I do gi. I do a lot of like lasso guard. Yeah. But I know when to turn it off. Though. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> That's I don't need the important it. thing is yeah. knowing when to click it off and be yeah. like, let's do normal stuff. Normal stuff, and I, I really. I like no gi much more. That's that's where I shine is in no gi. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I 100 percent agree. Hell yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> All right. So we are eating up your time like yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah. and I good. but I, and I'm fucking loving it. This I'm not gonna lie, dude. Man. This yeah. is like you, everything you've been saying in this thing. It's mm-hmm. crazy. I need you mm-hmm. to tell the people where they can find you. Oh. Tell them. What, what the, the fuck, fuck they need to do to get private <laughs> lessons, to, to, to bring you on, like, for fucking seminars and shit, dude. You make some dough. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we'll put everything in our... Hell yeah, we're going to put it all in there. Appreciate that. So yeah. um, where I train at currently is at, uh, in West Sacramento, uh, California, um, at Buena Vida Jiu-Jitsu Academy. It's uh, owned and run by uh, Colo Vida. Really cool guy. I've known him for quite a long while, I'll say that. Uh, really chill dude, um, really nice facility, has a primary mat and a secondary mat. Um, I teach privates on there all the week, like the whole week, weekday, and then also the weekend on certain select time periods. Cool. Um, pretty much just hit me up on Instagram. It's uh, CIAGON underscore uh, JITS, I think. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Wait, we'll, we will put we'll it up put there. It in there. <laughs> we're damn sure going to put it up there. Don't worry about that. We yeah. got that. Just shoot me a message um, on there, and then I can uh, coordinate a time. Uh, my rates are... Uh, slightly increasing due to inflation. Uh, <laughs> I try to keep them pretty low, but um, they're increasing starting the first of next month, so June. Okay. Hey, um, but it's worth it. Yeah, I do uh, individual hour sessions. I also do a bundle where it's uh, a discount for multiple lessons uh, done that way. Um, whenever you're doing any lesson, say an emergency comes up, try to give me like you know a 12 hour notice. That would be super cool. But if it's like a family emergency, car crashes, something's on fire. Right. It is what it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. Uh, hopefully, you're able to take that, uh, take care of that stuff and no one's right. horribly injured. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty much that. Um, with dual lessons, if someone wants to pair up, that's fine by me. Uh, oh, we yeah. can coordinate that. It, just, it There's a little uh, – Semi-privates. I like yeah. teaching semi-privates. They're okay. There's a little stipulation I have. One is you need to make sure that whomever you're going with uh, is – coordinate to your schedule to had it where a person's like oh yeah they'll be here and then they're a flake oh I'm like, shit this is very it changes how i teach the yeah. lesson um and how we progress stuff also the level of the person uh heavily uh changes less can't so, have like a purple belt and a white belt that'd be weird yeah if the right, white right. belt can't hip escape yeah. you know, there you go it's going to be a very <laughs> difficult lesson yeah. you're going to have a bad time yeah and <laughs> that being said i can split a lesson so if it's like an hour lesson i can split 30 minutes where it's <laughs> techniques for the white belt and then 30 minutes where it's for the purple belt but I need like you know the night ahead of time so I can actually Prep plan for it. it yeah, yeah uh, for I'm sure. not I don't like mm-hmm. shooting off the top of my head uh, I think it's disingenuous to the student because okay. there's a lot of things that you miss uh, things don't cohesively stick so it's problematic that way and I, I, again I view anything where it's not in a good, decent, structured manner that's almost like swindling to me, which is not okay. Um, but if I can structure it for you, awesome possum. I just don't like a little super last minute, hey, five <laughs> minutes before, this is what it is. I'm like, I'm not angry. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not angry. Right, right, like, right. For my own sake, I don't want you. I don't want to decrease the efficiency you of You don't want to give somebody a bad product. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's yeah, just not good man. for anyone. Um, that's, that's legit. For uh, seminars, I do seminars uh, locally, and then sometimes I fly out uh, to Idaho, uh, different places. Um, but for seminars locally, if you're within like an hour drive of West Sac or Antelope is okay. where I'm, I'm stationed, um, then I usually do like a, a 50-50 split uh, oh, yeah. over there. Um, okay. I do it percentage-based. Uh, that way it doesn't All overtax the, uh, uh, the gym. Uh, primarily because when you do with a gym, uh, this happened with my first instructor, um, where you you have a particular amount that the person's getting paid for it, and then you're hopefully get enough people for it. And if you fall short, you're in the red. So even right. if you're very pleasant, maybe the person showed great stuff, you're still in the red for like a Hell lot yeah. of money. Yeah. So Absolutely. I don't like that feeling, and I like repeatable stuff. So uh, I have no issue with just doing it there, especially if it's local. Now, if it's past an hour, then I do like a small guarantee and then yeah. a split. Um, if you're flying out, then Obviously, there's be plane flight. And Hell yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Got to cover that shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm not trying to go poor. Yeah, right. <laughs> I ain't trying to go broke helping a motherfucker out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reasonable, but I'm not <laughs> that <laughs> reasonable. Bad, I'm not. <laughs> Dude, do you get out and, like, do you do you travel around a lot and train at different gyms? I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit more because um, I was uh, feeling um, 
uh, like uh, I was in West Sac a little bit too much. So uh, right now on Mondays, I intermittently swing by Aries, uh, okay. Sacramento to uh, swing by there, get a little training in. Yeah, but I go. have no problem. Usually on Mondays. So I've uh, swung by uh, Chris Holdsworth's the Academy. Really great. Really, really awesome dude. Uh, he runs it. And whenever I uh, go to anyone's class, not to sound like mean or anything, but I always like to hear their pacing and yeah. how they teach the moves and how they cohesively put them together if they spend too much time or too little time. Dude, he is a fantastic instructor. Awesome. Dude, when I went over there, I was like, I could not think of any possible way to wow. relay this information better than better, so right? he, yeah, he's very welcoming good dude. Shit. but good um, shit. I, gone by there I've gone by uh, numerous ones uh, Elliot's really cool up in uh, El Dorado Hills okay. so all different uh, types of spots well, so. dude if you get a chance to fucking if you you hit us up if you want to come through man we'll we'll set something up for you at Infinite yeah, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. cool. especially Friday nights Friday, Friday nights, nights. Oh, yeah. Friday nights are just well, fun Wednesday, yeah. too. Wednesday night or Friday night either Wednesday, Wednesday one of us is Wednesday's Wednesday more night. structured mm-hmm. yes. Friday's just a good fucking time yeah kind of good fun get the disco ball going yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah, dude. We might be we might be having a fucking DJ up in this bitch oh, on Friday. Right. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, that'd be good, um, dude. So, mm-hmm. Carl, honestly, you you're very impressive, dude. Yeah, and, 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 like we are. I, I can speak for myself. I'm, I'm guessing yeah, for yeah. too. You're very, very impressive. I enjoy talking to you. Like you can tell that you love this shit. Right? Yes, it's like it's important to you. And I always say, right? It's like if it's important to you, you will find a way. And if it's not, you'll find an excuse. Like. There are no excuses. There's here. no <laughs> fucking excuses at, at all, dude. Like from the very beginning, from from the way you started jujitsu, you didn't find an excuse. You fucking found a way, and you like you did what you had to do. Thanks. And hey, dude, you're like you're very fucking impressive. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Seriously, yeah, you really are. Like I, I enjoy I have this to conversation. You send a whole bunch of money your way for all this. <laughs> oh yeah, like, listen. I'll but send you my I'll send you my cash app. I'll send you the cash app. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but no, real talk, man. Like. Damn, and you didn't even curse, so that's fucking awesome. That's <laughs> He's a good version of you. He's a good version of me, man. Damn, that's awesome. No, but, uh, no, but is, but is there anything else you'd like to share with anybody? Like, I mean, tell them if we're gonna have to quit jujitsu or something. There's a lot of people I've been talking to who've been like, oh, hey, you know, I don't know about this shit. So, from from my perspective, again, I don't necessarily have the greatest perspective because, again, I'm not like an emotional. You're not person. super emotional. Yeah. Okay. So, but I do analyze a lot of people who are emotional yeah. or have a lot of issues with it. Now, there's a lot of uh, problems when you deal with jujitsu. A lot of it's expectations. You expect, oh man, I trained Ooh, for a month. Good. I should be subbing the blue belt. Yeah. No, you shouldn't. Like they weren't given it via a token. Oh, maybe you did sub him on this or that. Right. Neat. They sub you the other 98% of the time, or they're working on this. So don't gauge yourself all off of other people. That's very dangerous. What? He says he, everything you know I, I say. I know. Also, he shit. So weird. also on the emotional per, uh, spectrum side of things, be very careful with being a highly emotional person with jujitsu. You can be oh, with other man. things, but think of it this way. Uh, there's uh, one particular person I worked with, which they were very emotionally driven, which was really great. They do so much hard training, but it was also worked on the opposite end of the spectrum. Right. Right. When, they don't, when they don't do it well, yeah. Yeah. It, or, it fucking breaks them. Or if they perceive that they didn't do it well. Yeah. This particular person would win gold multiple times and did amazing, but someone almost got a point on them, and then <laughs> it would it would be very uh, unpleasant for them. So it's a danger on that it's a great driving force but it can also be very negative so you need if you're like that and you can't control it whatsoever you need someone to kind of like even yourself out and even right. that mentality if you're not an emotional person stick with it like you're brushing your teeth every day you, if you think of it as win lose or anything like this it's very easy to go into that same emotional roller coaster that yep. you shouldn't necessarily be in um you should be steady and understand <clears throat> stuff will come to you even oh, if yeah. I don't want to sound like a turd, but even if you're the <laughs> dumbest person on this planet, if you consist consistently stick with stuff, yeah. you will gain those skills. Like, Absolutely, you will get it. It, it will happen. It, it's like the, it's the shit, shit everybody always says. If you want to get good at jujitsu, just keep showing just keep up. Yeah. just keep showing up and actually putting in the effort. Mm-hmm. You can be like a turd. <laughs> I guess. You can be that and still do well. You will yeah. get better. You don't Damn. always have to overanalyze it, overthink yeah, it. As a beginner, as a white belt, just show up and just mm-hmm. keep going and going. To, it's like your working brain out with weights, right? Yeah. Just keep working out. Don't have to look at your bicep every That's day. It. Oh, it's got a little bit bigger. I don't know. In two dude, years, it's like, oh, I'm a You're like, holy bigger. shit. <laughs> yeah. You look back at the past. What did we say when Esther was here, right? She was like, we like, baby tank of the past would kill to be as good as you are now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the you in the past, if it could see into your fucking future, you'd be like, 
this is awesome. Yeah. All I got to do is keep showing up and training, <laughs> turn my brain so off, we're listen, listen to Carl, <laughs> listen to Rod, listen yeah. to Harold, and the shit will work. Like, yeah. A uh, couple other things I was going to say, too, is uh, from a, a instructor standpoint, too, uh, whenever you're training, don't put too much weight into your instructors. Like, listen to what they say. Try to understand why I do this versus that. Um, but be careful about just following 100% blindly yes. without understanding logic. Mm. A lot of professors are pretty cool with right. once you get your reps in, asking, why would I do this? What would be the situation? And then you're like, oh, you got your reps in? Sure, I'll, I'll chime you. in and that sort of thing. So it's very productive that way if you do that. Um, also, don't think too much of your instructors as towards don't they they are in a position of authority but try not to turn them into some cult leader cult yeah. leaders yeah or, they're not your fucking balls yeah. they're not yeah. your lead. yes yeah it's they, it's uh it's just some I'll, guy. I'll give an example it's a guy if who just kept doing it he yeah. quit. it's a guy who didn't quit if there's a person who's really good at carpentry does that mean that they're a morally good person or a bad person sure. or far anything? From it. No, they're just very proficient with That's carpentry. It. I can be a total mm-hmm. asshole and be really good at something. Yeah, and you need to uh, you need to keep that in mind. <laughs> in <jiu-jitsu. laughs> yes. uh, don't think too much of them, but it, it's nice when you have a positive, upbuilding environment. But also, remember, if the person's a complete turd bag, don't just quit jujitsu. Remember, yeah. it's like McDonald's. There's exactly. a whole bunch of places. Tons right? of them. Yeah, especially in Tons Sacramento. Of them. Yeah, right. So many. So Hell yeah. Find the one that suits you appropriately, within reason. Not one that's like going to beat you to death or talk crap about you until you like get depressed and right. go somewhere else. So yeah, it's yeah. very important to have level-headed stuff there, dude. I really want you to come back. I was going to say <laughs> that. Always, I was going to say that too because he is definitely a loquacious I individual. I fucking <laughs> really talk. want you to come back. Dude. And like, there's so much more that I want to oh ask him. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, damn. You can always pick my brain. Yeah, however you want. For dude. sure. I, we ain't paying you though. I got <laughs> no, but Carl, man, I, I do appreciate you coming on. I've been trying to get you on here for a minute, dude. And it's it, like you have a lot of value to add to the conversation. Oh, really, you. really great. Great topic. And what's weird is that I thought you were just like, because I, I have, I've known you, but I don't really know you that well. But mm-hmm. I just remember you from like back then when I was a white belt. But mm-hmm. I, my perception of you is like, just like your typical gi guy jujitsu is like really good at gi and that's all he does. Like that's kind of what I thought. I just didn't know. But mm-hmm. it's weird when like we're having this conversation. Like you're a lot of what you do is like the same things that me and Harold talk about. Mm-hmm. It really aligns with with our way of thinking. I, I'm just like, like really it's fucking blown away. Awesome, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I'm awesome, man. And yeah, you, yeah. And and the way you so genuine it, with the way it. You yeah. explain it's fucking very beautiful, analytical. Dude. Yeah, very yeah. genuine. I I really appreciate you coming man. on. So. Thank you. Hey, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode because you guys got a lot of value out of this man right here. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely check us out. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Share this one. This is going to be a great one. And we'll see you guys next week. Us. Us. Dude, dude, that was oh, you, fucking awesome. Good, dude. <laughs> and thank you, James, for providing the whiskey for this fucking night. <laughs>